we'll give uh, time also to um, ask questions. Um, it's still going to be in the topic of marketing. And yeah. Let me know. So my name is Desi, and I think I'm here to talk about how to get more users by understanding what they need. I think he just talked about the importance of finding consumer needs. So first, a small introduction. So my name is uh, yeah Desi. So I do corporate media on weekdays. I do radio announcers on weekends. Since we are in the spirit of promoting. I do announcing at Cosmopolitan FM, that's 90.4 every weekend, 7 to 10 a.m. I write, I take pictures in between, and I try to be Ibu dan uh, Isri Soleha 24-7. Okay, so what is the easiest way to get users? It's to create something they really need. If you create something like really high-tech, or you think that this is the coolest idea because this is the high tech and you promote it with every might but it's not something that the consumers need, they're not going to buy it. Trust me, I've been like uh, creating products for what, seven, eight years and if it's something they don't need, they're not going to buy it. But, so that's the easy part. The hard part is how do we identify what our target consumers need? So how do we identify it? It takes two E's. You're right. And you're E's. So I'm just gonna draw example from how I really launch a product. I think even though Unilever is an enterprise, but I think it relates a lot about what serves you to find what consumers need. So you observe the consumers in their natural touch points. So like for instance, I sell ring soap, molto. So I talk to the consumers, I go to their house. This is how consumers actually wash their clothes. Most of my consumers anyway, not you guys. And I sell Royco, I sell Sariwan Lis, I like Adlibs, yeah. Um, so I, uh, I, I go to the kitchens and see how they cook. So this is how they cook. I sell plants. Fair and lovely. I like it. Fasolim. So this is how they put on moisturizers. So forget about this image. Beautiful lady wearing moisturizer while they smile looking at the camera. It doesn't happen. What happens is the one on the left. So after you see it, you use your eyes and then you use your ears. So then you start validating your assumptions by listening to your consumers, listening, not talking to them. So there are some basic rules. Uh, when in Unilever, we call it consumer connection. So it's not doing research, it's connecting with your consumers. What not to do when you connect with Indonesian consumers. You not ask them directly about your products. Because why? Indonesians are generally very nice. They don't want to hear your feelings. What do you think of the Dolphin browser? Very nice. <laughs> what do you think of the food here? Very delicious, the portion is really big. What do you think of the wine? Excellent, that's, that's from me. I, I really think the wine is excellent. This is what got me talking in English, like, full. So that's thank you to the wine. <laughs> so that's one. Don't ask them directly about your product. Two, don't ask yes or no questions. Indonesians are generally very shy, like me. I'm very shy. It takes wine to make me like this. So don't ask yes or no questions. So say, Ten botol. Ten botol. Is it good or not? Then they will only answer, it's good, it's not good. Instead, just ask them, what do you think of this ten botol? And then they will say, it's good. Why? Because they're very nice, right? So they will say, everything's good. Why is it nice? Because it's sweet. But I would say, no, thank you. But is better. That's also ad uh, Yeah, yeah. So I do love ad -libs. So this is what you do. So remember these two things. Never ask them directly. And do not ask them close-ended question. Keep it open. Then you will get to know what the inside is really there. So you can't really ask consumers like, okay, so what do you need? Do you need a fast browser? Do you need something to eat? Do you need a nice tea to drink? You can't really ask them that. So that's the tricky part. You ask them about their cash, not the money, their concerns, their aspirations, their stress points, and their goals. This is what you ask your consumers. So around these four points, you can find out insights about what they really need. So concerns is like, what are you most afraid of in the future? For Indonesian mothers, mostly they're afraid their husband will cheat, or their sons or daughters, or their sons will be into drugs, or their daughters will get knocked up. So that's the common, common concerns. 
Your aspiration. Who do you aspire to be? If you can choose to be anyone you like, who would you want to be? Their stress points. What keep, what's keeping you from achieving what you want? Usually in Indonesia, it's either time, it's either money, it's peer pressure, and you ask them what they're doing. So this usually relates to surroundings. I have like 25 seconds. So cash can help you find unmet consumer needs. So you can know like they aspire to be like this, they want to be like this. So what is it that you can help fill in the gap? And it can help you find the trend. If everybody's talking about the same thing, most likely it's a trend that you can write on. So here's a quiz <clears throat> with 15 seconds. What do you think this product is about, this particular cash? So I'm concerned that my husband will leave me or cheat on me with a younger woman. I want to be as beautiful as the girls in the entertainment, but I have no time to take care of my beauty. I'm like, it's going to cost a fortune. And I really hope that prices go down soon. So I'll have a, I don't have anything, but maybe you can contact Karina for the next year. So what do you think? Is it the BB cream or is it the Dove? I'm, I'm, I'm hoping the ladies would know this. Yes, it is the BB cream. So they want to be beautiful, but they don't want to pay and they don't want to spend time. What aspiration is that? I mean, that's nonsense. But this is how you actually derive a conclusion. I mean, like you talk to your consumers, you find out their cash, and from their cash, you find what they really need, and then you develop a product. So let's get out there and get ourselves some new users. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Any questions here for Desi? Question, question, question. No? Oh, yep. One. <laughs> uh, hi, I'm just uh, curious how long have you been uh, doing all this practice? I'll just take the mic because I like the mic so much. Okay, so uh, <laughs> when Unilever is a marketing research driven company, so when we enter, the first thing that we learn is about this. It's about how you connect with your consumer. So from the very beginning, yep. what I have been thought of is when you talk to your consumers, when you connect, not talk yet, when you listen to your consumers, when you connect with your consumers, this is what you do. So it takes practice because at the first time, what you want to do is just ask them like, who do you think this product? But sooner or later, you get to get around it. So when you first meet someone, you actually get to know them. Because like when I met, I met you, of course, I don't literally just jump asking like, what do you do? I was like, where, where did you come from? Was it traffic? Is there traffic coming here? So it's the same with consumers. When you talk to them, you just put a little uh, basta basi, what's basta basi, small talk yeah. in the beginning. Chit chat. Chit chat. And then you ask them about this cash. So it's, it just needs to be embedded. Yeah. I don't need the mic, don't worry. Um, what, what do you think about focus groups? Because my experience, focus groups just, like you said, in Indonesia, everybody just says positive things. So what do you think about focus groups? Yes. This is a very nice place, by the way. No lie. <laughs> okay, so I think the trick about focus groups is that with Indonesians, you can't literally take what they say word for word. I mean, like, if they say they're nice, so why is nice? So I think it's, it's um, the challenge is to find... So that's why in Indonesia, I think we do it a lot of ways. So we do focus on summer groups, we do one-on-one -on -one talk, we do quantitative researches. So it needs to be, we cannot, because like, and then at the end of the day, we trust our gut as well. So I think it cannot be like just one center of uh, attention when you find customer research, but I think the tip when doing FGD is that you need to really boil them down to that stress point where they actually will tell you the truth at some point. So the FGD, so this is not torture chamber. Yet. Unilever does not torture its consumers during focus discussion group. So it usually lasts around two, two and a half hours because then you start to see the inconsistencies if they are being inconsistent. So. Yeah, don't deny it, or was it? I just ask them like, why, 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 and then at the end of the day, you find something, or just take something conclusion and string along. So second lightning talk, another five minute uh, presentation. Um, I was told no slides by my. No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So uh, I would like to introduce my friend Gita, who just uh, moved here from actually from the U.S. from New York. But she is also experienced in um, startups, and she is here to tell you a five-minute story on failures and uh, lessons learned. Can you guys hear me? I'm really loud, because I'm from New York. Okay. No? Okay. Sweet. 
Okay, so let's try to do this in five minutes. My name is Gita. I'm from New York. For the past three years, I've been an uh, independent startup consultant. Before that, I founded Mermaid, which is an e-commerce site for plus-size fashion. Um, just a little statistics, 50% of American women are about the size 12. Reference, I'm a size 2. So that says a lot. It's a $14 billion business, and I got into it with two other friends um, because it's a $14 billion business. Um, and while doing that, um, I learned best practices along the way of what not to do. Uh, the company was eventually put on hold, although we gained a lot of traction, um, online, media, and even the investor for Motcloth and Zappos uh, were about to do the angel funding for us. So everything was going well. There was a lot of issues uh, internally. Um, so uh, after that, I became an independent consultant for multiple startups around New York. We're talking fitness related, um, other e-commerce, virtual fitting room technology. I've worked on many of them. Out of the many I've done, only one have had investment. So one thing I'll tell you guys right now, nope, it's not about marketing. It's not even about ideas. I'm pretty sure out of everybody here, 99% of you will fail. That's just reality. Um, I know, so room statistics, 99% uh, of you will fail, and a lot of it does not have to do with the fact that you guys can't reach to your audience, uh, the audience doesn't like you, a lot of it will matter and boil down to execution and people. That's it. Um, if you can work together in your team very well, and you can tailor make your products to the people around you and your consumers, you're done, you're good, and you better keep being better at it. Because the fact is your idea is not unique. I mean, I've worked with robotics and virtual fitting room. Even doing that, there were three other competitors doing it extremely well. So your idea is just never unique. There are billions of people in this world. They're doing exactly what you're doing, or better. So it really is, when it comes to marketing, you better know your product, you better know your market. The reason why I got traction and I got the attention from Motcloth and Zappos is because I love my product. I love my market. Plus size fashion, I have many friends and family who are above a size 12. It really angers the crap out of me because they can't go shopping with me. It's really simple. So I talked to them, I had focus groups, but in the end it was on the ground. I networked, I went to plus size fashion shows. Yes, they exist. They actually happen during fashion week. It's true. Um, plus size fashion shows, I met bloggers, I blogged, I met, um, you know, I, I was active with other plus size fashion designers. You name it, I got to know the market so well, and you better be on a first name basis with people. Mm. So if you go to these events, and trust me, nobody's, there's always somebody in here, just like Dolphin said, who knows more than you, or who you need to know. So don't close things off, and don't call it networking, because it's not, it's relationships. If you just see people as a means to an end, nothing's gonna happen. Mm. Make relationships with people, get to know them, then you start, you know, talking about your ideas and communicating. Because like I said, your ideas are just not unique. You need to shop them around. Um, a success story of mine is that uh, a really good friend of mine who went to the same school, in fact, he lived on the same floor, he has this little startup called Warby Parker, just currently valued at 50 million. It's, uh, it works like uh, Tom's uh, shoes uh, for eyeglasses. So each pair of glasses is $95, and if you buy a pair of glasses, they'll donate to someone in need. Fantastic concept. There are four people in there. They work really well together. They work during school. Very good friends with all of them. I help them. And um, you know what? They knew how to get you. So that was one of the success stories in my community. And best practices from them is exactly like, you know, what you would expect from a catalog, right? You just need to know your market. and. Uh, just tailor it to them and love it. You better love your product and what you're doing. All right, thank you so much. Yes. Five minutes and under. Um, any questions here for Gita? All clear? Crystal clear? Yes, okay. Um, so which startup ended up getting the investment for you? Um, it's, it's called Live Fitter. Um, it's a fitness 
You know what's funny? I'm actually not really ever quite sure what they do, but it's basically <laughs> like, it, no, I'm dead serious. But they have a lot of followers on Facebook and Twitter, um, and the reason why it's so successful is because the founder is this super like hardcore fitness dude. He's like CrossFit embodied in a human being. And his enthusiasm is the reason why they have hundred thousands of Facebook followers with almost like no money. But yeah, you have to embody your product. You better love it. You have to believe in it because if you're just doing it because you think there's a need and you're like filling it, there's somebody who already knows there's a need and they're filling it better than you because they love it. So it really is that simple. Fuck with the person. But yeah. All right. Any other question? Love you? Yeah. I, I hope you like your enthusiasm. How do you keep it up? And uh, <laughs> I can answer you this. A lot of wine from the back. <laughs> yeah, as you said, networking is very important that you build a relationship with that person. Do you have any tips on how to build such relationship? Yeah. Uh, because sometimes when you go to a network, you know that person, but then you lost contact. How do you uh, keep it up? Oh my and gosh. You? Yeah, so here's the deal. I was actually... <laughs> So um, that's a really important question because, like I said, it's about making relationships, right? It's not just about, oh, can I have your business card? You can have a hundred business cards, but if you're not having a relationship with any of them, they're toast. And nobody's going to, like, help you out if you call, hey, remember me? I met you at Kama, like, a month ago. Anyway, I had this awesome idea. They're not going to remember you and they don't care. So the thing is, if you meet, if you go to a group, it's not about how many people you meet. And FYI, I went to business school. I know what not to do for networking. Don't try to get 100 different business cards. Talk to them, get to know them, remember the freaking names, and like say something personal. Because when you just say, hi, my name is Pita. I do independent consulting, they're like, OK. Just say something like, hey, what is it that you do? Like, that sounds really interesting. Oh my god, I know somebody who does this. Try to connect people with people and try to do something for them. Because unless, if you keep asking somebody for something, why would they want to help you out? Like, don't you offer something to other people? So always offer, it's a connection, or just saying, you know, somebody to rely on, you're here. Like, anything, your enthusiasm, it all works. But it's not a numbers game, it's an intensity game. Like, how much are you putting into a person that they want to give back to you? And that's genuine enthusiasm and appreciation for a person. That's not like, I'm going to use you because, you know, you're worth this much. No. It's about, I really want to get to know you. Because here's a little good thing about Indonesia that everybody needs to know. You think you need to talk to the CEO? No, you need to talk to the secretary of the CEO. Because she'll make your life extremely hard if you <laughs> are not nice to her. So... There's a little, you know. Thank you. <laughs> Any other question? One more? No? All right. Round of applause. Oh, okay. All right. All right. I'll give you one more. <laughs> Actually, I'm kind of curious by uh, her first question about your enthusiasm. How can you keep it up? <laughs> uh, aside from being an independent startup consultant in which you always have to be very interested in the person you're um, working with because I mean if you don't um, they're screwed um, but I'm really glad that you brought it up because Brina in order to track me here she does this amazing thing called unlimited Gita you should check it out and I went that sounds fantastic I'll come over <laughs> so wine and it's also like I said it's just I really care about what I do I really like the people I meet. I love seeing people be enthusiastic about something that they do. That gets me going. Because like I said, if you wake up in the morning and you're like, oh, I don't want to be here, you're screwed. You might, you will never be the best at it because there's somebody who loves it and they're going to be better than you. So, simple. All right. Thanks. Uh, last but not least is Ahmed. Okay, so Ahmed, um, is the only, the only, the only guy actually in the roster. So I hope you bring, bring your A game. I'm it. <laughs> All right. So we are going to give Ahmed five minutes, um, and then prepare your questions. All right, everyone, give it up for Ahmed. 
Hi everyone, my name is Ahmed Osbinit. I'm with uh, Local Social. We do software services for restaurants. So um, I'm here today to share some observations that I had um, on uh, B2B customer acquisition when I, while I was working for a startup in Silicon Valley. Um, one thing is obvious when, when you're in Silicon Valley is that everyone um, in a good company, in a company that has good culture, all of them uh, love their product and they love their company. And um, so that's why I think it's very important that everyone in the company from top to bottom becomes a salesman of getting people into the company so that they can produce better products all the way down to developers who naturally enjoy working on the product. And this passion and uh, pride in what they're doing, it rubs off. So when they meet other people, uh, you know, when they're networking, uh, people can sense that. And you never know when you're going to meet the next client at an event or meet someone who can introduce you to a client at an event. Um, and they seem to always be thinking about their product. Uh, you have all those people who drink Kool-Aid in um, the Bay Area, those people who love Apple products, and who love Microsoft products or uh, Google products. Um, they have this insane uh, love for the products, even though you, know, you don't own any shares in the company. Uh, but uh, it, 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 it's, you, can see, you can see in them, and uh, it gives you some confidence, and you end up having some interest in taking a look at their product. And um, as the previous speaker mentioned, naturally networking is very important. And uh, there seems to be two types of networking. Uh, she, was, she also alluded to that. One is just exchanging name cards and getting connected on LinkedIn so that you get more than 500 connections. And then the other is um, that you actually enjoy the company of the people that you meet. Uh, and you hang out with them, you can discuss the challenges that you have developing your product with them, the programming challenges you have, hiring challenges that you have. And because you actually enjoy each other's company, you actually look out for each other. So if you meet someone that you can introduce to this new friend of yours, you'd actually do it without that person actually having to ask you. Uh, and, but you don't get to get introduced to the decision makers all the time. Uh, so sometimes you have to deal with real management. Uh, so this is where it gets pretty challenging. You have to convince a middle man manager to really like your product, to really uh, believe that it will increase their effectiveness, the effectiveness of their subordinates, or it will increase costs uh, for them so that they look good in front of their bosses, in front of their superiors. And you have to convince them. And um, it is only then they would stick out their neck for you to uh, actually convince their bosses to use your product. And when that occasion does come, uh, do remember to uh, pay it forward and you know, mention this middle manager to the decision maker when they actually purchase your product. Um, and now that since you have so many customers already, uh, don't forget to retain them. Uh, I was reading uh, salesforce.com uh, annual report some time ago. And um, they spend, I think, practically all their costs is in sales. And they spend a huge amount of money trying to retain customers because they lose a lot of them all the time. Uh, so I think it's very important to continuously show activity to your customer. Once they purchase your product, let them know that things are going on. So typically that comes in the form of a dashboard. Uh, and periodically inform them of how much money you're making for them or how much time you're saving for them by showing them the ROI. Yep, and that's all I have for you. All right. So since we have a little 20, 20 seconds left, um, Ahmed, what, can you tell us about the uh, about local social? Because I'm sure everybody wants to oh, know about it. Uh, it's a, a company where we develop software services uh, for restaurants. So we deal with uh, customer database management, uh, marketing uh, and uh, online reservations for restaurants. Yeah. So this is like Indonesia's um, kind of like open table. Uh, yes. Open table and Yelp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the space is heating up uh, rapidly right now. 
uh, with lots of uh, competition. So it's getting exciting. So you guys should check it out. What's the what's the website? It's, uh, localsocial.com. Localsocial.com. Local with a K. Uh, local with a K. Yeah. Okay. All right. So any questions for Ahmed? I think everybody just wants to get to the food and um, <laughs> drinks. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, we got one question right here. So, uh, my name is Ivan from Great, and I would like to know about this local social. Is it, uh, are you providing like um, restaurant reservation? Okay. Or are you, I mean, the third party that supplies that? But you have to create with a queue, right? Yes, correct. Oh, okay. <laughs> Make real connection right here. I'm making things happen. <laughs> All right, so um, we also have, so everybody please give a round of applause to Ahmed. And just to let you guys know, um, why we do these lightning talks, we have like, we only give them a chance to do five minutes, right? And what we want is that if you really, really like the speaker, uh, like any of the speakers that's is speaking five minutes, um, you could please let me or Nofita or Claudia know because then we can invite them back for a 20 minute um, presentation. Let, just like what Edith uh, did in the first place. And um, it's basically a way for us to uh, test and see what, you know, like, you know, what the enthusiasm is like for, for any of the speakers. Um, and then we have some announcements, right? For the... Um, actually, uh... So thank you everybody for coming. I'm just talking on behalf of uh, Farina and Claudia, three of us. We come together to organize these monthly meetups for all of you guys to have this you know, community gathering thing here because in terms of lean startup, there isn't one existing right now and uh, we see a great need of that. But in order for us to continue organizing meaningful events, we do need active feedback from everybody, which is why we do all these check-ins. I get all your data, I mean, at least your emails. And um, right now, I'd like to, I'm going to pass around a small piece of paper uh, in here. And I want every single one, if possible, to write um, some sort of comments, um, what you'll like about uh, the event, uh, maybe in terms of the order or the length, it's a bit too long, too short, um, you want it to be more structured or whatever, and maybe some guidance in terms of what you want, what kind of events you want in the future. Uh, we did talk last time about potentially doing workshops. Um, I know that there are some of you that are actively developing startups as we speak, and um, and also maybe we can do, you know, things like uh, pitching sessions or something. Um, there are investors in your midst. So, um, apart from this, we also stress in the networking part. The three of us are quite experienced in the networking and what it's all about. Um, so, ready your business cards and get to know each other. And as Gita said, uh, don't just get their business cards, start relationships with them. Could lead to something special. <laughs> Thank you. All right, so with that, um, I'm going to open the floor for wine, beer, uh, beverage, food, and you guys should mingle and stay longer and talk to each other. Anything else? And one last thing, uh, where you put the paper? You put it in this box, I'm going to put it right there in the center table. So please just fill them and put them in there. Thank you so much. Please, please fill them in. If not, you're not welcome to our next event. <laughs> I'm kidding. Thank you. Everybody, please give a round of applause now.
Why is it? 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 Why is it?